I'm delighted to be welcome, welcoming back Dan, my man in Japan. Dan, you gave us great uh, insight into Ange Postacoglu. Please give us insight and the pronunciation of our new player that we signed this <laughs> where we woke up this morning to. You, you, you woke up to a gem. You woke up to Kyogo Furuhashi, uh, one of the J League's best. Um, we all have nothing but great things to say about him. Uh, the people I know who have followed his career are besides themselves right now. Um, an amazing signing by Celtic, a coup, uh, a, a, an absolute masterstroke. Uh, just the fact that they kept this under wraps until it was announced, which is something that you never uh, see uh, on that side or, or over here. And he's just an incredibly talented player. Uh, he's going to light up the goal uh, for, for you guys week in, week out. Um, just a, a, amazing. I, I think that uh, Celtic have gotten themselves a real winner. Is he one of the top strikers in the J-League, or was he? I, I, well, I mean, he, he may still be. Uh, Vissel Kobe play a game tomorrow night. We have no idea if he's actually going to be involved in that. Uh, but he does lead uh, the league table, uh, 14 goals. Uh, that's 14 out of Vissel's 32 goals this season. Uh, he knows exactly where to put it to get it into the back of the net. Good with his feet. Uh, knows where to head it in. Uh, knows how to set up a pass if he has to, you know, and, and provide that assist. But really... Um, he is just good anywhere on the pitch. When he has the ball, you watch him play, and it's like the ball is glued to his feet. Um, it just incredible vision, uh, a playmaker. Uh, I, I'm running out of superlatives uh, to describe Kyogo, but uh, just a gem, an absolute gem. Oh, that's 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 music to our ears, um, because you know how much I loved. Shinsuke Nakamura. So if we can get another gem from Japan, it would be amazing. But Dan. As you said, we've done our business quietly and that's the way we want to do our business because what we've had over here over the last couple of weeks is speculation, false headlines, bullshit uh, and just, you know, we've been linked with a lot of players who um, may or may not be, you know, talking to the club but this proves that the club are doing the business quietly. Uh, we have a new CEO, Dominic McKay and we're happy with that because there was a lot of leaks and obviously before Ange came we had... 10 weeks of Eddie Howe, but you know, that's all behind us. And uh, we're just delighted to, to get this, to get this signing in because when I woke up this morning, you know, I, I wasn't aware. And then I soon got a press release from Celtic, which you don't normally get so early in the morning. And it was just, you know, normally the evening before you would get a little insight into what's happening. But no, this was, this was just pushed in and it was lovely to wake up to this morning because, uh, what I've been reading about him is so positive. I, I can only imagine. Uh, there was nothing about this in Japanese press. Uh, he had been getting interest from, I believe, Anderlecht uh, in Belgium, uh, PSV in uh, Holland. Uh, they, they were said to be keeping their eye on him and, and possibly submitted offers. Uh, but I think it speaks volumes about Furuhashi's talent uh, that not only did, did Celtic go for him, but that they paid up or, or are going to be paying up. Uh, the rumor transfer fee is something in the vicinity of uh, five million pounds. Uh, that is, if, it, it's, if it's in the range, 4.6, 4.7, I think that would be the second largest transfer fee paid uh, for a Japanese player in Japan. Uh, the largest was a few years back when Arsenal paid five million uh, for Takuma Asano, and uh, who is now, I believe, going to be in the Bundesliga this season. Uh, but he is a talent that deserves it, and that, that they were willing to get out the checkbook shows how much they wanted him. Definitely shows how much Ange wanted him. Uh, this was a surprise announcement, uh, but I think if you go back and check the tape, you'll find all of us saying that Ange had a list. I'm sure he knew which players he wanted the club to have a look at, to keep an eye on. And I have no doubt that Fudohashi was either at the top or very close to the top of that list. Yeah. And that's also great to hear because we have signed three other players um, before, before this. And, um, you know, you do wonder, was it the last manager? Was it the last, uh, you know, head of, head of scouting or 
director of football, whatever his title was, who, who left the club were these, you know, legacy players from them that the club had been tracking last season and, you know, where he really anges players. So this one now has just ange stamped all over it. This this is the peanut butter and jelly. Uh, is that a thing over there? Does that work here? I know I don't want to get too American on you. Um, well, we, we you can book fast on the fish supper. There you go. Um, the, the, there are few uh, Japanese strikers, wingers. I mean, he can play as a striker. He can play as a winger. I'm not going to get too into, into the tactical side of things, but few Japanese attackers uh, who are better suited for Anja's style of play than Kyogo Furuhashi. Uh, I think that he will know the kind of football that Ange wants to play. I think he's going to be prepared to slot into that system. Uh, he is good at, at dropping back and contributing to the defense, which I think even if you're on the front lines under Ange, you do have to do. You, you aren't just sitting and cherry picking. You, you see him in the midfield contributing, helping to get the ball back, pressuring. Uh, so I, I think that he's going to know what he's getting into. It's not like... Uh, other players who may be going to, into situations where they've seen tape, uh, they have seen the style of play that their clubs utilize, but you know they may not be used to dealing with it. They may have different expectations. He's faced it. He's scored against uh, Ange's Yokama F. Marinos in the past. Uh, he knows exactly the kind of style they play. He knows exactly how they won the title in 2019. Uh, he knows exactly how they've been so strong this season. So he's going to go in uh, having already memorized his lines. Um, obviously, I'm not going to say that you know he's going to be from day one, 100% ready to go, he's still going to a foreign country. He's still going to have to get used to things. Um, it's different environment, different culture. Uh, but when you're on the pitch, all you care about is the instructions you've been given and what you're told to do. And I think that Fudahashi uh, is a mature player. He's a smart player. And he's going to know exactly what is being asked of him. Yeah, and he, he's won a couple of trophies in Japan. And he's also an international player who scored goals for the international team. Uh, that's right. Uh, in, in fairness, looking at his goal scoring record, two of those did come uh, in Japan's uh, narrower than expected 14 nil win over Mongolia. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I was credited with a goal at some point in that game. That was wild. Um, but in all seriousness, yeah, you know, not to be, not to get too glib because I have gotten in trouble for being glib on, um, on, on Celtic related podcasts before, but, uh, this is a signing that everyone listening should be excited about. Um, he is just a phenomenal player. Um, he has so much potential. He's at six caps right now. He's gonna. That number is only going to keep going up. Uh, and I think that by playing, by going to Celtic, uh, by being in a position to play for a club like that. Uh, he is setting his intent on making the 2022 World Cup squad. Uh, and as long as he continues to perform at the level that he has in Japan, I think that's uh, very much uh, in the realm of possibility. Yeah, and Dan, I had uh, I spoke to you before about my last, uh, I suppose, confidant in Japan, which was a local lad from Drada, uh, Baz Riley, who's, who I actually had in the studio yesterday to record a podcast because he lived in London and we were doing something on the Euros and the final, and we're also talking about, you know, life in Japan as well. Um, although we didn't bring up Shinsuke Nakamura. And I couldn't believe it this morning when I woke up and I said, oh, Jared, we could, we could have spoken about that on the podcast because we're going to put it out this evening. So I messaged him and he, he was walking last night and I messaged him and I just got a message back off him now. And he tells me, um, he says, FC Gufu in the third division, I think I pronounced that right, uh, my local club, um, and home of my favorite Japanese band, that's uh, a band he was actually in, The Solution. And he, he just t- says, I'm just so happy and excited to wake up to the news this morning. He's been playing alongside Iniesta for Vissel. And look, he says he's got loads of ability. And he just hopes he settles into Glasgow and learns a language because he does know Glasgow too. And like, it's not the easiest place for, for someone from a different culture, as he knows, because his, his Japanese wife and, and you know, children are half Japanese, half Irish. And I'm sure they, they found some culture shocks when they moved to Ireland. But, um, yeah, he was over there for about 12 years, and he's, he's so excited. 
and and is that the reaction in, in Japan? Um, you know, from the media and from, I suppose, fans of the the club he's going to leave because you'll have to do some exit uh, merchandise now. You will, and just as you saw, there was the farewell, uh, the thank you, boss merchandise, uh, just just as I, I promised there would be. And I'm sure that Vissel are preparing uh, a, a line of Kyogo Furuhashi. You're going to get the commemorative uniform, the T-shirt, the, the scarf, the photo frame, the keychain, the stuffed bear, the cushion. The t- they're going to put out all that because Vissel know what they're doing. And even though they are getting uh, five million pounds from Celtic, why not get another uh, few hundred thousand from the fans uh, who will be more than willing uh, to celebrate one of their own? Um, when he played at Gifu, uh, they were still in the second division. And now they're in the third. They're, they're dealing with a rough time, but uh, he was a star. Uh, you could tell that he was destined for greater things. Uh, I have a couple of good friends uh, who who live there, and they're uh, English. They're both uh, British, and and they um, are involved in in the J League sort of English language fan community. Uh, their reactions, they are like beaming fathers uh, who, whose son has you know gone off to you know, has has gone off into the world. Uh, they could not be prouder. Uh, I think that Gifu fans are going to feel the same way. Uh, especially because they they will they should be eligible for some of that training compensation, uh, the solidarity payments, uh, and so they'll be getting a cut. They'll be getting their cut, and uh, that's good for Gifu, and certainly good for Kyogo's uh, youth clubs, his high school team, his university team, um, because it is so rare that a Japanese player earns such a, a high wage bill. So this is going to be celebrated for a lot of reasons. Um, not just because a Japanese player is going to Europe, not just because a Japanese player is going to one of Europe's most historical clubs, one of its most storied clubs, but because a Japanese player is finally getting uh, the transfer fee that they deserve. And that's not something that we've seen very often between Europe and Japan. Yeah, it's just like we we spoke, I, I'm not sure if we spoke on the last time you were on when we spoke about Ange or if it was off offline about, you know, and would look to Japan to bring in players. And, you know, I'm just delighted that, like, with the news of the quality that you're telling me about and from Baz as well, because, and, and the fact that he's come up from his local club is just a, it's a lovely story to come to my club. And um, I'm just, I'm just raging we couldn't have gotten <laughs> recorded last night. And, and, and hey, you know what? The, the best thing about uh, Furuhashi having started his career at FC Gifu is that they wear green. So hey, you'll you'll be you know you'll you'll be set. Uh, there, I'm sure you'll see uh, plenty of, of Gifu uniforms and Vissel Kobe uniforms and even uh, Yokohama F. Marinos uniforms uh, at, at this at uh, Celtic Park uh, when things are open uh, to international tour, tourism again. Uh, you know it's going to be it's going to be just like um, when we have our Super Cup every February. And it's that sort of not just about the two teams that we're playing, but it is a celebration of the league. So it's fun, you know, going to the stadium and seeing people wearing all the different uniforms and all that stuff. So uh, I do hope that uh, this signing, uh, um, I know that Ange's uh, rise, uh, his arrival, uh, inspired a lot of Celtic fans to, to discover the J League and to discover Yokohama and what they're doing as a club. I'm sure this will inspire fans to look at Vissel Kobe and what they've been doing over the last few years. Although uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be very familiar with Andres Iniesta and, and his uh, journeys in Japan and, and do take a look at FC Gifu. Uh, they're a, a great sort of smaller market club. I mean, it is much more of a local team. Uh, they're much, much, much smaller than Kobe uh, and, and certainly than Celtic. Uh, but they're a great community side. Um, they have very deep ties with their local fans. And uh, the more that Celtic fans learn about our pyramid, the better. Brilliant. Dan, I know you're very busy uh, today with requests and appreciate that um, we're the only podcast that you come on to. So I really appreciate that. And also, um, you're going to be reporting on the Olympics, which is eventually going to go ahead uh, with no with no fans in the stadium. So... But it's, you know, hopefully it's going to be the spectacle for us watching on TV. And, you know, from, from Ireland, we're sending over a team. But, you know, keep an eye on our boxers because they should medal. I, I look forward to... to-
Uh, it is one of the best stadiums that Japan has to offer. And I, it's disappointing that it can't welcome the crowd of, of 63,000 that it can fit. Uh, there's going to be some exciting games there. Uh, but I, I, at least the games will go on. Uh, hopefully everyone's uh, country does them proud. I'm looking forward. I'm going to see my uh, women's team for the first time. That, that's something that's, that's really exciting. And afterwards, there will be J-League again. And there will be uh, the premiership. And uh, looking forward to, to seeing how Kyogo gets on under Ange. And there's, there's you know, the Olympics, which we're looking forward to. And there's a lot after the Olympics we're looking forward to. So good times for all of us. Brilliant. Ange, Ange will be uh, in the news, no doubt, in, in Japan for the season. But we, we've got 2,000 fans back in tomorrow for a preseason against Preston. I'm more excited about that. I'm not, I'm not one of the lucky ones. Um, but my me, me travel certificate did come in this morning, so I'm, I'm getting a bit excited about getting back to Celtic Park. And when all this is over, Dan, we hope to see you in Glasgow. But we look forward to the Japanese fans coming back because they did come in the numbers to see Nakamura. So once again, Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to fill us in. Not a, not a problem, Andrew. It's always a pleasure. Look forward to doing it again. Hey, if we, you might have uh, room in the budget for one more Japanese player. and. Uh, you know, knock on wood, fingers crossed. I'm happy to come on if that's the case. And uh, if not, then, hey, you've got our best manager and you have our best player. And uh, hopefully uh, that'll be enough, at least until the winter. Music to my ears and all the fans. Thank you very much. No problem.